The Center for Educational Media and the College of Education at Middle Tennessee State University are proud to offer professional development to K-12 educators in Tennessee through our online video library. The following video is presented by the Center for Educational Media in partnership with Professional Educators of Tennessee's Leader U Conference. For more professional development videos, check out our website at cem.mtsu.edu. I'm Dewey Eskinance with Professional Educators of Tennessee. I've been with them since 1991. I've been on the Board of Directors since 1993. I am here to introduce you to Dr. Timothy Drinkwine. He's a native Nashvillian and a 1998 graduate of John Overton High School. He attended UTC and completed his degree in the School of Education with a focus in secondary education and a specific concentration in the social sciences. He began his teaching career at Gramar, Gramar Middle School in Metro Nashville. He completed a master's degree in educational leadership during his time in Metro Nashville Public Schools. He graduated with a degree in 2006 from Tre Trevecca University. In 2006 through 2010, he taught seventh grade world geography and eighth grade U.S. history, as well as teen leadership while at Sunset Middle. He served Spring Station Middle School for four years as their assistant principal from 2010 through 2015. During his time as a Williamson County school leader, he obtained a doctorate in leadership and professional practice from Trevecca University in 2013. Currently, Dr. Drinkwine serves as principal for Aiken School in Metro, Metro Nashville Public Schools. Dr. Thank Drinkwine. You. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, good morning to you. Um, let's talk about some roses, okay? Um, what does a rose need to grow? What does it need? Just shout it out. Water. Water. Sunlight. What else? Soil. 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 It needs rich soil, right? I mean, that's what it needs. Um, there's this idea, though, that occasionally a rose um, pops out of the concrete. Um, this idea, I first heard about this from a gentleman named Jeff Andrade Duncan. You're going to hear more about him in just a moment. Um, he uh, is located on the West Coast in Oakland, California, and he has his doctorate. He has a Ph.D. He is a former high school teacher, and he's delivered a TED Talk. Uh, those of you who have seen TED Talks, he's delivered one of those. It's very powerful, and it's gone viral. The title of that uh, TED Talk um, actually was the title of a poem <clears throat> written by a rapper, a hip-hop artist named Tupac Shakur. And you're going to hear a little bit about this poem in just a moment. The poem was titled, Roses in the Concrete. Roses should not grow out of the concrete, but occasionally it may. It's been done before. Let's talk about some objectives, right? We're, we're going somewhere. We want to see what the objective is. Um, and we have three of them. The first one, we just want to define an ace. What is an ace? You're going to notice that there's a connection between an ace and a rose that may grow out of the concrete. We want to talk about how does an ace impact a school day? We also want to talk about some strategies that we can use to help students cope with an ace. Now, let's just pause for a moment and talk about an ace. Let's just throw it out there. What's an ace? Someone can just shout it out. Anyone know what an ace is? If you don't know, I want to encourage you to write this down in your mind. Tweet it right now so you can archive it in your social media profile. Um, type it into your smartphone, write it down. This is incredibly important. An ACE, it's just an acronym, and it stands for Adverse Childhood Experience. You're going to um, see some specific examples of what an ACE is. And in your neighborhood, 
in your school, in your community, there are students, underdogs, who have experienced ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. Uh, they not only have, but they are right now. Think of a student right now. Think of a young child right now. Think of someone you know right now who's just, you know that they have it tough. You just know that they come from a hard place. They come, a place, they come from a place of struggle. Think of them right now. I want you to think of their name. Don't say it out loud, but just think of it. And think right now on a Friday, June 30th in the summer, what it is that he or she may be doing right now. Like I've got mine and I'm thinking of him and his eight other siblings and I know where they live because I've been there. And I think probably right now, if anyone's awake in the home and it's a public housing project, um, if anyone's awake, um, there's just probably not a lot of good things going on. Who knows what happened last night? Who knows if there's any food in the public housing unit? And if there is food, it's whatever they were, you know, they were able to obtain based off of some governmental help. Think of that student right now. Think of what their experiences are going to be like today. There may or may not be an air conditioner in the home. And it's hot and humid today. It was beautiful last weekend, wasn't it? But today it's a little hot and humid. It rained a little bit. And so that humidity is just sticky. Um, who knows if they got really good quality shoes? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know if they're going to get lunch today. And I don't know if they're going to get dinner. And I sure as heck can pretty much bet on the student that I've um, thought of they're not getting fun experiences like going to summer day camp. And they're probably not going to the pool unless someone else takes them. And I'm gonna share some what I call catalysts. People who can enter the life of someone who has ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, and tries to level the playing field. Because when we talk about equity in education, it requires someone else to come in and enter enter into the life of someone who has what is called a high ACE score. There is what is called an ACE score. You have an ACE score, whether you know it or not. And I'm gonna give you an opportunity to look at that. Okay, we'll get to that in just a moment. So we're gonna determine um, what an ACE is, and we've already done that, but we're going to determine how an ACE and adverse childhood experiences impacts a typical school day. And then we're going to look at some strategies. Because at the end of the day, if you just come and find out what an ACE is, that's just, okay. And if you just hear about how it impacts, okay. But how can we apply this? How can we take what we're learning with a growth mindset? And then how can it impact us so that we can change something? Something's got to change. The definition of learning does anyone want to give their stab at what you think the definition of learning is? You will not be wrong. You would be taking a risk. You'd just be speaking out in the group. What is learning? What is that? Change in behavior. Change in behavior. Absolutely. So learning, there, um, there's, a, there's a book, um, The um, Global Achievement Gap. And that started this kind of movement as it pertains to just achievement gaps and how the United States... Um, compares to other countries. And then it started this whole chain of uh, events where um, book after book after book was written based off of what are we doing anyway and what's learning. And I was reading a book back in 2006 and it just said, here's learning. Learning is when you walk into a situation like an experience, it doesn't have to be the classroom, although we hope it is, right? But it could just be walking down the street, going into a store. And learning is when you experience something and it either affirms or confirms what you already know, that's learning, or you are like um, confronted with something, some information that's going to change what you thought previously was a certain situation or was a certain reality. So it's just a change, right? Or it's an affirmation or a confirmation. So hopefully today you're sitting there and you're going, okay, I already knew what an ace was and this affirmed it. 
Or you're sitting there going, I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know how it impacted students or the one student you were just thinking of, uh, or me, like yourself, and therefore, I'm going to change. I'm going to change my behavior, maybe. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this. There was a study, the Adverse um, Childhood Experiences Study. It was actually done by an insurance company. Um, this study was huge, massive, because they wanted to figure out how do these adverse childhood experiences that you and I have, like we have them, or at least we're exposed to them, um, how do they impact our lives, our livelihood? At the end of the day, it's about money. Insurance companies were having to pay and having to support all of these humans, you and I, who have issues. We're all, we all have issues. And they were trying to figure out how is this happening? We're paying more and more money, uh, more and more premiums. All these individuals, they're, getting, they're coming to us, and it seems like we're becoming more unhealthy by the day. There's a reason why. Okay, now let's dive a little bit deeper and let's talk about three types of ACEs, okay? Here are three types of ACEs. Abuse, neglect, or household dysfunction. These are three types of ACEs, although there are many more. There are many more, but these are three types. Now you may remember I said you and I have ACEs. Now you may be sitting there going, hold on, wait a second. I was never abused. I was never neglected. I did not have household dysfunction, okay? But chances are someone you know has experienced that. There is a relationship, and this goes back to the study, between early childhood trauma and the health and well-being of a person or the problems that they experience later in life. So remember these insurance companies. This is real life. If anything from Ryan and his keynote was, was confirming for me was that we're just talking about real life. We can't deny uh, what's happening. And so this is just real life. That's what it is. Now, um, there's this triangle right here. And if a child starts his or her life with a foundation that is filled with adverse childhood experiences, then all of a sudden some negative outcomes are going to start developing for the child. Now, it does something. These ACEs, they do something to the brain. So what do we know? All of us have a brain. If you're a human being, you have a pulse, you have a brain. And this brain is so, so important. It's the very reason why we hold a child, a baby infant, just that. That's why immediately, what happens with, with the infant when they come out of the womb or out of the belly, depending on how the birth went? What does the, the nurse or the doctor try to immediately do? What do they do with the skin to skin? Skin to skin. That immediate skin to skin contact, if it can happen, and most of the time, thankfully it does, but there are sometimes it doesn't happen because of the health of the infant or the health of the mother. They, they're not able to do it, so they have to remove the two from each other. They have to separate them because of maybe they have to work on something. Maybe there has to be an immediate surgery or something like that. But that skin to skin is so important for the brain to get off to a good start. Now let's talk about uh, children who may not have that skin to skin. Let's talk about children, maybe they're age one, two, three, four, five, these young foundational uh, parts of life. What if they're experiencing abuse or neglect or they're in a home that's full of dysfunction? All of that has an impact on our brain. It's right here, this, this right here, it's about the size of my fist. So for me, and most of us probably in this room, we probably had um, a childhood where we can look back on and we're really thankful. We're really thankful. Um, most of us, probably. Uh, because we probably did not have to experience adverse experiences that would have a negative impact on our brain. Now, there was a game that Harvard University, and they're pretty smart at Harvard, um, they um, uh, created this brain architecture game. And 
Um, I uh, and my wife and our two children were uh, about to embark on some pretty significant life change. So my wife would not allow me to buy the game. You have to, you have to buy this game. It's an amazing game. Uh, but I was thinking about buying it. But instead, I talked to a good friend of mine who just graduated from Vanderbilt. She's a behavior analyst. She's very intelligent. She has led this game before. And I said, is there a pared down version of this brain architecture game? She said, yes. So we collaborated and we are going to play this game today, okay? Now, it's not a competitive game. Those of you who are like competitive and you're like, oh, I want to win. I mean, I guess you could win, but we're not keeping score necessarily, okay? But you do want to tap in to your creativity and you want to tap in to your um, sense of trying to accomplish something, okay? And you're going to have to work together you probably want a group of about four or more. So if you're a pair, I would just partner up. Okay, so four more. So um, you're, and you'll, trust me, you, you may be thinking, oh, I gotta get up, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna meet new people, but guess what? In about 10 minutes, you're gonna be thankful because you don't want to do this with just you and maybe one other person, okay? All right, now, like, like any good, like any good, um, Cooperative learning um, experience in a classroom, we need to define some roles, okay? Um, you can have a group of five, a group of four is perfect, four, five, that's perfect. Y'all are great. Y'all look great, too. You look great. Okay, like any good cooperative learning activity, you've got to have some defined roles. And one defined role that we need is an encourager. Talk for 30 seconds and decide who's going to be the encourager. Ready, go. Okay, another good... Um, Indicator of a good cooperative group is you got to have a, a materials manager, a supplies manager. Pick that one person in your group, and that person is going to be the person who comes up to me, and you're going to grab some items. Ready, go. You're going to come and get them right now. Okay. You're going to grab some pipe cleaners. You can pick four of any color. Just four individuals? Four individual ones. Okay. You can go multicolored. You can go monochromatic. Make it, there you go. Be a risk taker. Excellent. Get one of yeah. <laughs> Good job. All right. So you have four pipe cleaners. Okay, beautiful. Okay. All right. Now, you and your group, you're going to build a brain. You're going to build a brain. Look at a partner next to you and say, I'm going to build a brain today. Say it. That's right. You got it. We're going to build a brain. Okay. Um, we, um, we have an opportunity to build the best brain ever. Okay. Um, now, we're going to roll the dice a little bit. We're going to roll the dice. Here we go. You and your group, you have about 15 seconds to talk amongst yourselves. You're going to pick a number one through six. Choose wisely. One through six. Choose wisely. One through six. It could be any number one through six. And then when you tell me your number, when you tell me your number, I'm going to reward you. Ready? Talk about it. Talk about it. You've got to come to a consensus. Consensus. Six. Okay. All right. Have your number ready, okay? I heard six, three, five. Do we have a number over there? <laughs> three, okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. You all, you're, you're pretty fortunate, actually. You'll see why. Okay, so your job, depending on your number, so the corresponding number that you chose is over here, okay? So I heard six, I heard three twice, and I heard five. So we're going to have... Uh, the following, okay? If who said six? Uh, Woo! Don't be jealous of our group with six, okay? <laughs> now look at this. This group right here, they're going to build a square base, so it's going to be a square, okay? And it's going to be with their uh, pipe cleaners, okay? And they get four straws. So listen to this. The straw is a support. The straw is a support. So watch this. I'm going to model for you. Let me have one of yours. Okay. So right here, I'm going to take this 
support and I'm going to be able to thread it through right here. And then I'm going to build a square. So I'm going to have another pipe cleaner with a straw, group six, and then another pipe cleaner with a straw, and then another pipe cleaner with a straw. And I'm going to build a square. Who said five? Be honest. There you go. Five. So you get to, guess what? You also get a square base, but only, you only get two. You only get two supports. Okay. You get two supports. Okay. And then our group of, uh, our group who chose three, um, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to do a triangle base, but guess what? You do have straws. Who was our three? The base. You're going to, oh, you're going to see how to build it. Okay. You need some straws, don't you? They were like, I need my support. Okay. Here we go. So le listen to this. Oh, what do you need? Two straws. Perfect. Yeah, not to be left out. Not to be left out. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. Now, before you build it, we have to go over some ground rules. And I saw some of you, you are already, you're eager beavers. You're like, you're like, my competitive spirit's kicking in. I'm going to build the best brain ever. Um, well, you, you still have a few um, guidelines that you need to um, consider, okay? So we all know what kind of base we're building for our brain. Now, what's interesting about our eager beavers is they're just thinking that the brain is just this part. But no, this brain is multi-layered. Think of a child and a child's brain. It's not fully developed when they come out of the womb. It takes a long time. There's a lot of experiences that a child endures throughout his or her life. And then what, what is it uh, said? What, what's the um, statistic? It's like age what before we're fully developed? 22. It's like 22. And my wife would say, no, not for you. Like <laughs> it, for you, it's like 36. Like yours just developed. Um, all right, so here we go. Here's some more ground rules, okay? You're going to work as a team to build the brain. You must... And that's in all caps for a reason. You must use all the supplies given to you, except unless you're a group who chose three, the number three. You're only going to have three angles. So I'll just take your other pipe cleaner. Where's your other pipe cleaner? Five. Oh, oh, it's putting me in my place. All right. You're good. You're good. Okay, perfect. Good, 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 good. We can't use that for extra support. Uh, did you hear this question? We can't use this for extra support? Think about the child. Think about the child who needs extra support. Let's talk about some empathy. We're going to talk about empathy too in just a few minutes. That's a great question. You, you, I know you would. I know you would. All right. You must close each pipe cleaner at the end by connecting it to another pipe cleaner. So the reason why I collected these is A, um, these groups, they didn't choose why. They rolled the dice and they chose their number. So I got it in B because I'm going to model. Because any good educator models, right? Okay, so here we go. I'm going to connect these. I have to connect these at the end. Okay, so these would be connected. So if I'm building a triangle, these right here may be these two angles. Then I'm going to connect one right there. That creates my triangle. If I'm co you know, creating a square, those are two of my sides. Then I'm going to connect right here at the end, down one side, and connect down here at this corner and over. So you have to connect at the corner. That's very important. And I'm not tricking you on that. You just want to make sure you do that. Okay? You don't want to take like one pipe cleaner and then with one pipe cleaner you're creating your shape. That's, not, that's just not going to work. Okay? Now your team needs to be ready for life's unexpected blessings and unexpected setbacks. So just get ready, right? I mean, did you choose everything? Did you choose everything that happened to you in your life? No. Do, does the child that you thought of earlier, I know the student that I thought of earlier with his eight siblings, um, he did not make an active choice for where he's living right now or what food is not in the governmental housing um, unit that he's currently living in. He did not choose to have as many siblings. He did not choose for his mother to have um, nine children, um, and she's 29. He didn't choose that. And guess what? His mother's amazing. I love her. She's amazing, and she loves her kids. She also didn't choose some things in life. You're not going to have a choice. You're not going to have a choice. 
At the end, you're going to need to have built. This is very important. Think of Stephen Covey. Begin with the end in mind. You're going to have to think. At the end, this is this bottom bullet. You will need to have built a brain strong enough to withhold a weight. It will be provided for you at the highest point. At the highest point. Okay. Now we've modified and scaled this um, brain architecture game down. Um, and I will explain to you what the real game looks like. Um, but I think that we'll all be able to get the gist. Okay. Um, all right. Are you ready to build your brain? Okay. Build your foundation first. You may go ahead and begin. Build your foundation first. So you're birthing your brain. That's what you're doing. This, this brain is being born. Okay? So we have a... Is that one going to be a square? It's going to be a square. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've got a triangle. And, ooh, good looking square. Look at them with their supports. I love it. I love it. All right. So good looking brain. Okay. So, so now... We're getting through like our first like year of life. We're building our foundation, okay? And then life starts to happen, okay? And remember, life is full of unexpected blessings and unexpected setbacks, okay? That's just what, it, that's just what life's about. I know for me, there's been a lot actually. Um, okay, so um, hey, our group right down there, okay. Um, here are three pipe cleaners you're going to add, okay? Three pipe cleaners. And, and guess what? You know what? That group back there with three pipe cleaners, they also, did you know that um, their brain lives next to a very clean and safe playground? Did y'all know that? It's such a blessing to live in that neighborhood. It's great. Um, so that's a support. That's a support. So you're going to add this. You can discuss how you want to add it. Okay. You can add it however you want. Okay. Um, they are going to grow up um, and continue to build their brain. And they have a foundation. Um, that's their brain that they've built. It's a square with supports. And they also have this other support as a child. They have a very clean and safe playground. It's great. So they can continue. Um, this other group right over here, um, this group right here, they also have a playground. It's amazing. It's an amazing playground. Um, and um, the playground um, that they have, um, it, um, it's, it's there, but it's not as clean. And it's not as safe. Sometimes there are things like left on the grounds. So they got to they gotta support because they have a playground nearby, but it's not as clean. They, they didn't choose that. The child's only like, what, one or two? They're building their brain, okay? You can start building your brain however you want, but you only get that one support. Now, this group right here, um, there is absolutely no playground. There's nothing around. Um, in fact, there's really toxic um, um, activities that occur near and around where this child who was just born lives. So they're going to continue to grow, uh, but there's just not a lot of support. So you're going to add to your brain. You're going to build it up. Remember, begin with the end in mind. You will be placing a weight on the end of your brain. Okay. Now, this group right here, they have a playground um, and... It is clean. It's actually in an urban area, but the urban area, it's been recently um, renewed and restored. So it's a clean playground. But you know what? It's a little unsafe. It's still a little unsafe. Occasionally there's some crime. So you got a clean playground. It's been restored and renewed and all of that. But sometimes there's some crime. Okay. So there's yours. You're just going to add. You're just going to build your brain. Yes. Yes. I mean, we're not talking high. We're just what? talking highest point. That is true. That is true. Highest point. So the high we're at age what? Two or three right now? Yeah. So, so I'm thinking you got some more foundation to be laying. Okay. I yeah. mean, I'm not living in a house with no foundation. There you go. <laughs> a house built on what? Sand? It's yeah. going to fall? Yeah. yeah. Discuss with your team. So there's not a spec specificity for the highest point. It's not like it's got to be correct. 
so many inches or anything. Correct. But remember, you have to connect end to end. Right. So, so you got to think about how are you going to connect that one. Remember, you're connecting end to end. Okay. You know what? This is great. So I, I was noticing as I was watching this child, this brain grow and develop uh, and develop. This is what I was noticing. I was noticing some things happening with this child. Um, this child had no choice in the matter, um, but this was really cool. Um, this child, um, right back here, um, they received a very positive caregiver. Um, it could have been in the form of a nanny. Um, it could have been a, a, in the form of maybe a mentor, a teacher, its own parents. Okay, just a very positive caregiver. As this child's growing up, we're at like probably age five, six, going into kindergarten maybe. Okay, so they're going to continue to build and add layers to this child because remember, there's going to be a weight that goes on at the very end. You know what else? This group right over here, they also had an incredibly positive caregiver. Very positive. And I was just so grateful because they were near a clean, restored playground, but there was a lot of crime in the neighborhood. So they need that positive caregiver to, to keep an eye out. Um, now this group right here, um, <laughs> this brain, there was no caregiver. No caregiver. It's, um, it's really a shame. It's a shame. Um, it's, just, it's just really a shame. And now this group, this group received a caregiver um, and which is a support, a caregiver is a support. Um, but you know what? The caregiver was not in a healthy place in life. Um, so you're going to add, you're going to add. We're growing up. This brain is growing. This brain is growing. You're, you're going to be hanging something on its highest point. Be mindful. You got to use all the materials. Connect end to end. My children would probably look at that and go, but, yeah, that's... So we, okay, that's so how you do so it, right? We have to do this one. Okay, so if we do one, oh, so we've got three. I'm going to use this other part of this orange one to help. Like I got the little red one up there, balancing, so it could balance the book. <laughs> All right, so guess what? Our uh, group back here who has a caregiver, um, the caregiver, this group, or this child, this brain, has been so blessed um, and has just really started off with a great foundation, a great caregiver and everything, but certain things are beyond our control. And unfortunately, this caregiver has passed away, um, and so that support is gone. So you're going to continue to build up. You're going to continue to build up with those can right I, there. Can I have a question? Yes. Is the caregiver the mother or the father? We don't know. We don't know in this case. You know, that question. matters. Good. It does matter. It does matter. You can actually probably choose if you want. You can choose. All right. That would be your one choice. But we know a caregiver who is just this rock for this child is gone now. It could be. Could be. End to end. End to end. You wouldn't be able to like loop one to tie uh, into the end of itself. But it's oh. So like in the model that I did um, to build the base or the foundation for a triangle, do we have to unlearn some things? Do we have to undo we some things? End to end because we We're took. Oh, this is going to be an interesting debrief. <laughs> this brain. <laughs> this brain. You said end to end. I did. Yeah, this is, that's why this so is going to be an interesting <laughs> debrief. <laughs> Now, hey, you know what? This group has started off rocky, but as this child's growing older, um, there was this amazing individual who entered into this child's life, an amazing role model, which role models are catalysts. They can literally change the trajectory of someone's life. And so it's a great support, okay? This, this group right here also had a positive role model enter into the child's life. Um, the role model, though, is real busy. So tries to get there and be a part of the life um, every so often, but is not as strong as a support as this one. This one's like a, another parent who just entered into the life. So it's a pretty good support. Um, this, this child, this brain, unfortunately 
has had someone significant in his or her life who has really started to abuse um, drugs and alcohol. And so this brain, this young brain, did not make this choice, but has been exposed to uh, a pretty severe drug and alcohol problem. You're going you're gonna to build your brain. Oh, a really good support. It's uh, a really good role model. It's just the role model is not as consistent as yours. Okay. So you're going to hang the weight to the highest point. Here's the moment where we get to uh, look around. You, look at these. You can even take a selfie with your brain. This is good stuff. Hang that weight to the highest point. Really quickly, um, let's just process this for about a minute or two. And I really want to just give anyone an opportunity just to kind of share your experience. And, and trust me, many of you have already started to share because many of you have either made fun of your own brain um, and, and that's sharing, right? And there's, there's power in humor. Um, and in fact, a lot of times the funniest things we say are sometimes the most profound. Um, in fact, many of you, I've heard you start to create analogies or metaphors for the brain that you've created as it pertains to maybe the height or the look of the brain that you've created. So um, just share, like, what were some challenges that you had? What were some aha moments that you had as you and your uh, teammates were building the brain that you were building? I think um, our hardest part, you know, we had a strong foundation. As we went on, it got really hard to close the ends. Mm -hmm. So that would be like, as, you, as they grow, harder to close the gaps. Yeah. You know, to work harder. You know, my wife and I, her name's Katie, and we get, have a great relationship. And I'm just really grateful for her. And I'm just really um, blessed in that way. Uh, but we'll oftentimes have these conversations because we're human and life is hard. Life is just hard. And we will oftentimes have these conversations like, life is hard regardless. Like if you have a good foundation, guess what? Life is still hard. Life is hard even if you have a good foundation. This group back here, a lot of people would probably look at this group and go, that is a brain or a child of privilege. Why did they got it easy? But it was still hard, right? The, the pipe cleaners were short. They were having difficulty. They couldn't control everything. Their positive individual who was in their life passed away. Um, and so we just don't control everything. Um, I love how Ryan earlier, he leveled the playing field. He, he really wasn't just talking about people of poverty or people who just don't have a lot. He even said, he even touched on people of privilege, affluent. We, we're all in this together. It's hard for all of us. Um, great. Thank you for saying that. What else? Anything else? I think we were worried about what sports we were going to get, so they didn't take a lot of risks. I love that. This group, I wish you all could just have stopped and been a fly on the table watching this. This group, man, look how high there is this. And so the analogy that they used, because I would come and visit them, the analogy they kept using was, we are going to play it safe. We're not going to take a lot of risks. We're, gonna, we're just going to do what we need to do. I think you even said that you were going to shelter the child or something, like protect the child. Yeah, how many of you? Have dreams and aspirations, yes, yes, the same thing. Yes, unfulfilled dreams and aspirations. And, and you know what? Guess what? How many of you, like me, have known someone who was incredibly sheltered growing up? Has anyone, like, just raise your hand. Like, me too. And oftentimes I think, ah, oh, like, why? Like, why were you robbed? Like, and guess what? He or she didn't choose that. They didn't choose whether or not their parents were going to shelter them like crazy. Um, sometimes that happens. Life oftentimes is not about what we choose. It's but what you know what I see, and I've seen this, and I grew up in a rural community, and I've taught in a rural community, and one of the things I see in this is, is sometimes it's not in the sheltering. It's been the mindset, well, what's good enough for me is good enough for mine. <coughs> Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a first generation college graduate. And so what was good enough for my yep. mom and dad, they were not, that was not good enough for me. That were push, push, push. So that, that model says that to me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that For the lack of risk. Yeah. 
lack of risk. I love the perspective. And, and really, this activity, I think, lends itself to just different perspectives. Like, whatever your takeaway is from this, um, I hope that you're able, I hope you're, first of all, you're able to take something away. But then the second thing is, we're able to all just respect our own takeaways. We're all just so different. We come from different places. But the one thing that unites us all is the struggle. We all have a struggle. Um, for some of our students, uh, or that one student you were thinking of earlier, um, they have a struggle, and it oftentimes looks like this. All we see is the kid, or the client, or the customer who comes in, and all we're looking at oftentimes is just the shell of who they are, and we're just looking at them and we're thinking, why are you getting on my nerves? You're, you're ab abrasive, you're, what is going on? But that's just what we see. That's just what's up here. Um, but there's so much that's going on. Hunger, um, I don't know about you, but when I get hungry, I get hangry. And so when the student walks through the door and he or she is acting crazy, out of control, violent, aggressive, it's not because that student, I don't believe, I don't believe any student is born and just totally wants to do that. Something else is going on. Something, something's going on. Um, this is the Adverse Childhood Experiences Survey. I'm gonna give it to you at the end. Um, so you can just do it on your own. Um, this can be a very um, hard survey. So I just want to share that. You're not taking this out in front of anyone. Uh, you're not sharing this. It's just for you. You can just see for yourself what is your ACE score. And then I always like to encourage people to think of that one student. Try to answer the questions for that one student, just yourself confidentially, and think of what the ACE score is for that one student. Um, there are 10 questions, um, and um, this right here, um, oftentimes when we think of that one student, um, a student may have a 10 out of a 10. I mean, it's, it's pretty intense. Um, like every, um, everything is hit on the list. Anything from abuse to neglect, uh, to lack of resources. Um, and then, if you're someone who has a low ACE score, when I first started uh, to be exposed to ACEs, I thought, man, I've, got a, I've probably got a high ACE score. Um, I was uh, born into poverty. Um, ne I was born to two parents, though. That was great. I'm blessed. But neither of my parents went to college. Um, my father actually was raised in poverty. He was raised in what was called the White Projects of Nashville in Vine Hill at the time. Um, he was abandoned by his dad, who was abusive. Um, his mother um, smoked herself to death. Uh, my father, he's uh, passed away since. He passed away of a sudden heart attack. But he was the man. He loved me. He loved his wife. He loved his five children. Uh, but he just couldn't do enough. Uh, we just were raised in poverty. I was a, a free and reduced lunch student in Metro National Public Schools. Um, but you know what I had? And I don't control this either. I, I'm a white male. I'm a white male. I didn't control that. Jeff Andrade Duncan, he's the one that I was referring to earlier, who um, shared his TED talk on roses um, out of the concrete uh, from the poem by Tupac Shakur. He says this, if the fact of the matter is, <laughs> Um, and he says it, not me. He says, if you're born a person of color in poverty in the United States of America, it's hard to have a fighting chance. Um, and students don't choose that. Young people don't choose that. It's not their choice. Um, so I, when I took it, I had a lot to be thankful for. Um, even though there were many setbacks. I had a lot of blessings, a lot of supports. So maybe you'll take that and that's how you will respond. Um, yes. As a school leader, have you done this with your staff to understand your staff? We leader? have, we have, and we've been very careful when we do it. Yeah, we we're very careful. It's, but I'm sure it would yeah. be helpful as a school leader to understand your staff at a deeper level sure. as far as guiding them you know, and they're great. Sure, sure. We've done, um, we've done a poverty simulation. We've done some ACEs work. And then we, um, we collaborate with uh, um, an organization called the Oasis Center. And they've come out and helped us with um, a privilege, like a privilege uh, seminar, basically. Um, because we all come from different places. Um, this is Jeff Andrade Duncan. He is the man. If you can spare... 13 minutes of your time, you, you got to watch the TED Talk. 
It's powerful. It's amazing. It's just 13 minutes, and you will be inspired. Roses in the concrete. This idea that when we see a student <laughs> who's made it, who's come out of the concrete, when you meet an adult who shares their story with you, and it turns out that they were born into a family of struggle, but yet they have, an, they have a lot of accomplishments, they're a rose. And Jeff Andrade Duncan quotes Tupac, and he says, Tupac, as he's writing this poem, he says, you're not looking at the rose and questioning the damaged petals. That's not what you're doing. Of course it has damaged petals. It came out of the concrete. What you're going to look at is you're going to look at the tenacity of that rose. You're going to look at that rose and be in awe. You're going to be inspired by the rose who fought through struggle. Uh, Ryan, my good friend Ryan, he's a rose. He's a rose and I will embrace him. Um, let me ask you this. Tell me what that is. What do you think it is? There's no right or wrong answer. I mean, it is what it is, but you can just, what is that? Midnight. You can't really tell, can you? He's in the middle stage. Hey, what about, oh, oh. If I gave extra credit, you'd get it. I don't know if you heard him. He said, it looks like what? A rock concert. A rock concert. Look at this. Um, I went to a, I did. I went to a rock concert on Saturday up in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and it was at the nation wide arena, packed, uh, 15,000 strong. And there was this moment where everyone, you know, you don't take out your lighters anymore. What do you take out now? Cell your cell phone. So everyone started taking out their cell phone. And, um, I know that it's still a little bit difficult, but right here, it's really difficult. It's dark. You can see the singer on stage. That's pretty much it. Some light filtering through the concourse curtains. You know, there are curtains right here, and that's the concourse. That's the light. Some steps right here. This is where I was sitting. Um, and then this happened. One light, and then another light, and then another light, and then another light. And I wish the picture did it justice, but literally I looked at who I went with, and I was like, you can see everything. There were no lights on except one by one, these cell phones. You are the light. I am the light in a world that desperately needs it. We have students all the time who are just looking for the light. And if we just turned it on, we would brighten up the room. It's amazing. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, Pixar movies, uh, Inside Out. Um, Eric Jensen's work. This is Eric Jensen's work. Eric Jensen did some work and he said, we have six emotional traits that we're all born with. Six. How many Inside Out characters are there? Five. He left one out. So what are the six? We have what? Anger? What? Fear? Joy? Disgust? Sadness? And surprise. We're all born with those. Guess what we're not born with? We're not born with empathy. We have to teach that. Think of your students who come in and they're just, you're seeing the tip of the iceberg and they, oh, and they're fighting you and they're, I mean, literally, they're punching you maybe. Maybe they're saying expletives. Maybe they're six years old and they are doing things that you never thought possible from a six-year-old. We have to teach. We have to teach what empathy looks like, what care looks like. We got to teach that. Um, here is Maslow's uh, triangle again, that pyramid. You saw that earlier today. I'm going to show you really quickly what we've done as we close. This is what I've had an opportunity and privilege to be a part of uh, with our students who have ACEs. So remember we talked about practical things. This is what you can do if you're already doing it. Remember what learning is, then let this affirm you. Let it encourage you. So for love and belonging, we, we want every student, every student, it doesn't matter. At Aiken Elementary School, 
We're inviting every student to come read in the park. Just come and read, every student. We'll knock on doors, we'll go to home visits, we'll do a call out, we'll send it out on Twitter, we'll send them paper information, we'll hire a family involvement specialist and spend our own money to make sure that we do that because reading is so essential. And every student, we want every student to belong. Every student, every student, every student. Um, this safe and supportive environment, safety and security, we're gonna act goofy around these students. Um, we're gonna wear horse heads and um, just to get us to laugh, because laughing levels the playing field in my mind. If we can just laugh, I just laugh. Um, those are my boys right there. Love those guys. Um, we're also going to allow the basic needs to be met at school. So none of this like, oh my gosh, she or he is sleeping in class. Okay, what's below the tip of the iceberg? Maybe he or she didn't get a good night's rest. Let's just allow it. It's not dumbing down. They're not going to be able to attend to the rigor if they're tired. That's how I am, at least. I'm that way. Um, <laughs> I love this picture. Our assistant principal, Dr. Holland, she's amazing. Um, this is her adopted son. He's the man. And we have another student who comes in, and the student to the left, he has off-the-chart adverse childhood experiences and it, just struggles, struggles. Just take my word for it. Um, but you know what? Andrew just had a baby niece born. Andrew doesn't know how to uh, change a diaper. But my man to the left does. And he couldn't be successful one morning. He was, I mean, he would have been suspended if that was our mindset. We would just suspend him. Go home. Um, but he knows how to change a diaper. So Dr. Holland said, hey, I'm going to get Andrew to come down here. I'm going to have the student to the left teach him how to, everything changed. Let him be the, I mean, he's going to be the teacher now. He feels connected, proud, because he just had another sibling. Again, if a student needs to sleep, let him sleep. If a student needs a coat, give him a coat. If a student needs to wear a coat, because this is against the dress code, you've got to take your coat off, put it away. That's what you got to do. But this student does not have any heat and air. Zero. And then jumps on the bus in February. That's when this was. This is not this past February, but the February before. We had that massive freeze and those five days off. So this student was just freezing in a state of cold. Wear your jacket. We're going to pick our battles. We're going to pick our battles. Um, we're reading with kids in the park again. Uh, we're having fun. We're getting messy. Um, we're going to engage parents. This is my mother. So this is my mom, and she's part of the work. This is not what she does for a living. She's not an educator, but she wants to help. Um, so we're doing whatever it takes, and we're living with our families on the weekends. We're picking them up and going to the swimming pool in the summer. Um, it just doesn't stop at three o'clock. It just doesn't. Um, this is Mary Holland, our assistant principal. She's amazing. And she pours her heart and soul into her work. Um, and she loves kids. Um, this is, oh, we go to football games. These are my guys on a Saturday football game. This is my son. Many people would see him as a person of privilege. Um, and he probably is. But I want him to grow up knowing that there's more to life than just privilege and himself. Like be others centered. Um, there's Mary again, loving on kids. Miss Diane loving on kids. And what happens is this infection starts and it just becomes infectious because we have students who have adverse childhood experiences. They don't choose them. It is not a choice. And we're reading in the park and we're smiling with kids. We're letting them sleep if they need to sleep. Aces, um, they, um, they really, they do last. I mean, what you're born with and what you're born into, it just lasts. It's part of your DNA. It's who you are. But n nothing's ever too late. Um, and uh, I think you've seen some examples of that today. Um, I love that quote. We are the decisive element. It, you can replace classroom with workplace, office, cubicle, 
all about us and our choice on how we want to handle the deck of cards we've been dealt. I want you to think about that question, just knowing what you know. How does that impact us? Um, I do want to acknowledge, this is Mary Sunderbory. She's done a lot of research uh, on brain uh, research and trauma-informed schools and toxic stress. This is Mary Holland. This is Aiken School, cute little school in Nashville. Um, and this quote, Frederick Douglass, the man, love it. It is easier to build stronger children than it is to repair broken men. How true is that? It's powerful. So as we um, just move forward through the rest of today, I just want to encourage you, um, think of that, that one kid. Think of ACEs and how they impact kids and how you can be forgiving and allow uh, yourself to see below the surface of the water. Um, as to what is below the tip of the iceberg. There's a reason why students behave the way they do. Um, here's the iceberg. I've got the email list, so I'll send the PowerPoint for those who want it uh, to that email that you listed. And then here is a copy of the ACE survey, so you can keep that for yourself, okay? You all are amazing. And a fun group at that. Enjoy lunch and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.